So as promised in a previous video, we're going to take one last look at the fastest PCI graphics cards ever made, in lieu of a new discovery that I made in the making of that video. Um, if you are getting tired of the subject, I understand, and I do apologize. But not to worry, because we're going to be getting right back on track with actual retro graphics cards right after this. So, without any further ado, this is Pixel Pipes. When I first put together the fastest PCI graphics card video, I only actually had one XP system to test them in. As it turns out, this was the cause of a fault in my testing. My Athlon 64 rig generally gets very good performance with just about any type of graphics card within a certain age range. But when I put together my second XP system using a Core 2 Duo and retested those cards, some of the results were different very different. It turns out that in some cases the PCI cards could achieve even higher performance than originally shown. So I won't waste any more of your time. Here's a full rundown of both cards retested and stick around to the very end as I'll have bonus results for 1% and 0.1% lows which many of you have asked about. In general, the PCI cards perform much better on my Core 2 Duo system, seen in red here, especially in the 3D Mark test. The only exceptions are with Halo, which for whatever reason experienced horrible dips in performance on the Intel system, but remained much more steady on my Athlon 64 system. Half-Life 2 was simply atrocious on the Intel system, so I didn't even bother showing it here. Now let's get into the details. Here are the graphs for the 1% and 0.1% lows compared to a PCI Express GT520. In Serious Sam, the second encounter, performance was very nice and steady on the PCI cards. So even though the overall performance is much lower than the PCI Express card, it's still very playable. Unreal Tournament 2004 did get some nasty dips, and with some stuttering I experienced, I wouldn't really call the game playable on the PCI cards, at least at this resolution and settings. Half-Life 2 running on my Athlon 64X2 rig was quite playable on the PCI cards, with some occasional hitches as new data would have to be loaded through the PCI slot for an area I was entering. The PCI Express GT520 is running on the Core 2 Duo to take advantage of the added CPU overhead. Then we have Doom 3, which became much more playable on the PCI cards when switching to my Intel system. As you can see, the slowdowns aren't unmanageable. Very impressive results, I would say. Now I saved Halo for last because it shows some odd behavior. Halo is a game that on either platform will have seemingly random patches of major slowdown depending on where you're standing or looking, and then will suddenly switch to extremely high frame rates when you step out of these areas. Here's a graph of the frame times on the Core 2 Duo system where performance was the worst. You can see at the very beginning and very end of the test, performance drops way down to the teens. On the Athlon 64X2 system, these drops still appear, but much less severely, making the game a lot more playable there. So, messing with the fastest PCI graphics cards will land you with strange quirks and issues regardless of what you're doing with them. They are, after all, very unusual cards with modern GPUs um, in a configuration that they were never meant to deal with. I can only guess as to why, but it really seems like in order to get the most out of each game, you have to swap them out between multiple computers. And even if that were practical, you're still often struggling with weird ups and downs and hitching, stuttering, and other unpleasant side effects. It's the definition of a mixed bag. So after all of my analysis of these cards over three videos now, uh, we've got a pretty good idea of their performance characteristics. I think for now I'll say I'm done with this subject, but I hope some of you found this whole journey interesting. I certainly wish I had more than one system to test with to begin with, so I wouldn't have to make this video. Um, but at least we got some more information out of it.
If you enjoy my toiling through redundant tests to get to the truth and you want to see more computer curiosities explored and old graphics cards tested from a fresh perspective, then subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Facebook and check out behind the scenes photos over on my Instagram page. Thanks for watching, I'm Nathan and this has been Pixel Pipes.